Hi, I'm Gail with Branding of Naperville, and you see I'm in a totally different environment now because behind me I have my Qmatic system that is attached to my Bernina Q24 that's here on the frame. Now, we will do other classes and other demonstrations where we show you how to load a quilt, but what we have on here, you saw me make this on YouTube. This is Anita's Arrowhead. I finally finished piecing the top, and I've got my backing, my batting, and my quilt top all loaded together on the machine. So I thought it would be a great idea if I showed you how I quilt it. Now, we're gonna do something really simple today. We're going to pick a design, size it how we want it, and then we're gonna send it to the machine and we're gonna stitch it out. I'm also gonna show you how I line things up consecutively. So we're probably gonna have to do five rows of stitching on this quilt. So let's get started. I've opened up my Q-Magic. I call it Q-Magic because that's what my iPhone changes Q-Matic to. But I have the Q-Matic open and I've got a blank slate here, and all I wanna do is place my design, which I'm gonna pick with you. That's the hardest part, is just picking what you wanna put in here to quilt. But one thing that I like to do before I get started is sort of kind of tell the machine what size my quilt is. So that little button right there is the quilt size button. So my quilt is about 48 inches by 60 inches. So I can go ahead and just press my green check mark. The next thing that I want to do is pick a design. So the pick a design button is this um, two little pages with a plus sign. And now this is all of the quilting designs that I have loaded on my Qmatic system. So you can see there's quite a few of these and I have to tell you 90% of these are Amanda Murphy designs because Amanda Murphy actually designs uh, embroidery designs and in those embroidery designs are designs that can be loaded on your Qmatic. Here's an example of one of the OESD embroidery designs. Uh, this is the uh, Amanda Murphy long arm collection. So in here are the files you need for a long arm, but there's also files for your embroidery machine. If you don't have a long arm quite yet, you could take some of these designs on your embroidery module. You know, I've always had an affinity for everything retro, and this quilt has the viewfinder, it has the old bowling style designs, so I actually have pre-selected some designs on here. So I pre-selected this design for my machine, so I'm going to double tap that, and now this puts this in my design center. I say close, and now the design's in my design center. Very similarly to how I just double tap to put it in the design center, I'm gonna double tap to put it here in my artboard. And sometimes I just have to zoom out to get that little guy. And let's just zoom in. I think we're all kind of familiar with how we use zoom tools, so I'm putting that in there. And now see how it's red or how it's blue? When I touch it and it turns red, that means the design is selected. So I have selected this design and all I wanna do is I wanna keep the proportions, but I want it to be 11 and a half inches tall. Maybe just a little bit um, smaller than 11 and a half inches. So uh, 11 and 3 eighths inches. So it's selected, but because it's red, and now I have a, little icon here that's going to allow me to make it smaller and larger. My preferred method to resize the design is to use the keypad and now this is my height right here and this is my width so I want to adjust the height to be 11.375 that's 11 and 3 eighths and now I say okay apply and now look how much larger that is. So now I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna move my design over here and then I have to do a couple of other things. Before I get started doing any more designing, what I wanna do is set my safe area and setting the safe area is actually telling the computer where my quilt is in relation to this design center. So this is the button to set a safe area and when I select this, 
This is gonna tell me some things to do with the sew head. It's telling me to please move the sew head to the top left corner. I also have some instructions right there on the screen because the Q24 has a touch screen right here. So I'm gonna move this to the top left corner. And I'm gonna go off my quilt just a little bit, but I don't wanna go back onto my leader there because that would be bad. So I'm kind of lining this up just here. You can also see that I have my laser pointer engaged. And now I'm gonna select set. Now that anchors that corner. And now I'm going to take my machine and now I'm moving it. down to this corner just off the edge of my quilt but not too far in and that's right before my quilt my q24 is going to bump that bar and now i'm going to select set and now on here the red ring or the red that you see right here that is the safe area right, so i am here at my sew head but I want you to look at the screen of my Qmatic for just a moment. Do you see how I'm moving these little crosshairs across the screen? That's actually my needle. So I'm going to move my needle because I want to just tell my computer monitor over there exactly where my block is starting. And I want to start this at about an inch in right up to here, a quarter inch in, sorry, not an inch. So I'm starting at about a quarter of an inch right there. And that's exactly where I sort of want this to be. So now I'm gonna go back over here to my screen and see my design that's right here. I'm just gonna touch this and move it just a little hoo-hoo over. And now I want to do one more thing. I want to move my needle on my machine again to see where this, oop, where that is landing. Because I really am trying to get that to land right on the seam. I want to get that to land somehow like right on the seam of my quilt. So I'll look at this. And I am fairly happy with that. I don't want it to be touching the seam totally. I just want a little whisper of a space between. Now I want my design to go all the way across my quilt top. So I have this button, which is going to add more of these loop-de-loops to what you already see there. So I'm going to do one and two should cover it. Now that I've made the adjustment to the size, I know that it's in the position that I like, I am ready to press play. And what play is gonna do is send this over to my Q24 machine head, and I wanna start it from the beginning, so that's at start point, and now it's gonna do some thinking, and we're gonna go over here to the Q24, and all we're gonna do is pull up the bottom, the, we're gonna pull the bobbin, we're going to trim and then we're going to press the OK button. So this is my tie on pull bobbin screen and I, I have Seracore polyester thread through the top and the bottom, but I do have a brown on my bobbin and a ecru color on the top, but I've checked the tension with my tension gauge, so I'm ready to go. So all I'm gonna do is press this bobbin pull and pull my bobbin thread up through here. And now I want to do one little thing that you might be, if you have any experience with the Q24 and you're watching this, I like using the cup clip. And you see our little floppy floppy there? We don't want that. So I'm going to put the cup clip on the machine so that it will guide right over that piece of material that's not really tacked down at all. So this is the cup clip. It fits right onto the 96 ruler work foot. So I'm gonna just 
line that up in there like so. And I do have, I'm gonna tell you, there's no camera friendly way to do this. I'm just gonna push it on there like that. So now that's ready to go. I'm gonna put this on. I might wanna pull my bobbin one more time, just so I get all of my thread under the foot. And now this time I'm really ready to sew. All that's left is the green check mark. As you can see here, our machine has stopped and we're ready to move it on to the next row. So I'm gonna crank the guy up, move it in place, and then see you in just a second. I'm ready to stitch again, but before I can do that, as you can see, I have cranked up my quilt and I'm ready to start on a new row, but we need to set our safe area again. So I'm gonna do that by pressing our safe area button right here. And then I'm gonna go over to the sew head. And once again, I'm gonna set my safe zone. I'm moving my machine again. You can see the little crosshairs as they travel over here to the beginning of the design. And I like to start this knowing that I'm gonna start my design just about there where I'm not gonna have the needle right at my seam line there, but about a quarter of an inch lower than my seam line. So you can see here, I can bring my design down to right about there. I'm not moving it side to side. I'm leaving it just here like that. And then I have one more fail safe that I wanna do and that's to bring my head and I can tell where my head is because that's where the cursor is. So watch this screen as I bring my sew head down to the next seam in my row. So now I can see that my seam is really about a little bit lower than that. So see this little launch pad here? I can actually just use this to just wiggle it up a little bit. So I'm gonna look at it there and then I'm also gonna do one more check at the top to make sure I have this in the center. All right, I'm really, really happy with the way that looks. So now all I'm gonna do is get started again by pressing my play button. Now I want this to start at the start point and now it's all about what happens over here on my sew head. The machine's moving. I'm gonna pull my bobbin thread up with the pull bobbin thread button. I'm gonna bring that bobbin thread up, hold onto it, start sewing, and it's gonna do a row, and I'm just gonna repeat this three more times, and then my quilt will be finished. We're on our last row. And once this row is complete, our quilt will be complete. 
we're just about finishing up on our quilt. You're about ready to witness the final stitches here on the quilting of Anita's Arrowhead quilt. How about that? Our sewing is complete. All right, so the sewing's complete. And the last thing that we're gonna need to do once we take this quilt off our frame is we're gonna show you how to bind it. And not only are we gonna show you how to bind it, we're gonna use that binder attachment number 88 and we're gonna use mitered corners. So don't forget to join us for that and hope you learned something today and hope you see how awesome Qmatic is and how easy it is to use. We'll do follow-up videos for this to teach you what happens if and when the thread breaks, you know it's gonna happen. And when you run out of bobbin or you just make a little boo-boo. Uh, but until then, if you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is easy to find. It's www.youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. But until then, happy sewing, happy quilting, stay safe, and see you again soon.